giant boot hills all through the west. west, west. The outlaws, the gunslingers, the bit of the kids and worse. The Salton Sea. 236 feet below sea level and a new mecca for paramotor pilots. I've been flying here for a few years now, always enjoying the nice smooth air, but little did I know what was just right over there in the mountains. So let's go. It's an endless playground. So we're gonna go fly these canyons today, do a little scouting for a decent place to go fly camping tomorrow. by Shane there, even avoiding that boulder. Nailed it. Father and his son flying together, cruising along, my envying overfloweth. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, air's not bad down in here. I've never been in this canyon and I have no idea what's around that corner right there. Oh yeah. So it's really important to note that if you're going to be flying in some tight canyons like this, you understand the dynamics of your wing because you have to pendulum just right to get the turns because if you don't, it can go very wrong. I feel like all my videos need to have some kind of a special montage to them. And that's why this time I bring you the ghost glide. Una vez gran rey que tenía muchas tierras, un castillo y también un amor. Pero los caprichos de ese amor con el tiempo sin castillo y sin tierras lo dejó. It's time to go. There's my sunshine. I'm wearing all my clothes for tonight so I didn't have to pack anything extra. But now I'm cooking. It seems like a perfect canyon for this because Look at, there's all these nice areas that you're able to take off from in the morning. That's kind of a big deal. Wherever you land, you gotta make sure you gotta be able to get out. Nice, I think I see my spot. Committed. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! Cobra. <laughs> Totally age inappropriate. What? Yes. All I have to do now is make sure there's not a creature living in that thing, and I'm there. Ooh. Oh yeah. King of the world moment. Woo! Ah. Oh. I'm pretty sure the GoPro's not seeing those purples and pinks out there. Oh yeah. Whoa. This mountain's got balls. Lots of them. Look at this. It's like, it's like perfectly round. As are all those. It's gonna be an awesome night. Okay, let me show you how I did this with a minimal amount of gear this time. This is what I wore. Camera around my neck, water in my coat pocket, Two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, very smushed, in the other pocket. Now this is something that I did years ago, but never got around to using. So it attaches between the tank and the frame. And inside, I got my sleeping bag, not in its bag, so that it could fill in all the little random holes. I got my sleeping pad, and I got my tent and a little pillow. You know, one thing I discovered flying here last time was that once the sun starts to go down a little bit and the shade fills in, you can see the colors come out. There's, it's like this weird type of clay where it's purple on the bottom and it's this greenish turquoise on top and it's really cool. And you don't ever see that in the daytime when the sun is out on them. So before it gets too dark and before I sink my teeth into that apricot peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which I'm really looking forward to, just wanted to say a couple of things. There's certain brands out there that just evoke a certain type of culture. For example, Subaru is kind of one of those brands. Another one for me is Scout Paramotor. Of course, there's lots of great paramotors out there, but the thing about the culture with Scout is that it's to get out, it's to explore. And hats off to uh, Miro who runs Scout Paramotor because he organizes all these trips around the world. And he's trying to promote that type of culture and helping people achieve that their dreams. Otherwise, there's no way so many of us could go to places like Iceland or to Italy or to Spain and to fly on these adventures that he puts on. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. It fits my style and hey, the great machines too. Woo! <laughs> Seriously though, When's the last time you had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Mmm. This is turning out to be such a great night. See you tomorrow. Morning, sunshine. I hear paramotors coming. I'm gonna put on my yellow jacket so they can see me. Come around this bend any second. Look at that! No idea who that was. Orange hat guy. And I gotta put on two more coats on top of my flannel. I'm gonna be sweating out of here. Oh well, I was warm last night. Throttle check. And on my Scout, I have a safe start. If it revs up too high too fast, it kills. My thumb on the kill. And wish me luck. Ooh. Golden! They've arrived. It's the Nidhiuk Posse. Truth be told, I do get a little bit scared every time I do this when I'm out here. The anticipation of a possible blown launch. Check. Check. One, two, three. Oh yeah! Woo! 
Home sweet home. So a quick recap of lessons learned from this last fly camping trip. My undercarriage was great. I totally use it again. But I think I'd add a really small bag to have in front for light items like spare clothing. I liked not having to deal with cooking materials, but the one thing I wish I had was more water. I took half a liter and it wasn't enough. I did survive, but I could totally put more in a front bag and still keep it rather small. Other than that, I'd say it was a success. I'll wrap up now to a totally non-symbolic edit to one of my favorite tunes, Dueling Banjos. And please subscribe so I can feel special. By the way, I'm not sponsored by anyone, but I do appreciate folks from Team Fly Halo, Scout Paramotor, and PPG Smoke for keeping it real. And a shout out to my kids who helped me record all this music, film, and play the kazoos. <laughs>